Hey, welcome, or welcome back to Forest Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? Uh, I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know is hopefully you are watching me in black and white because, yes, this is the continuation of my photo inspiration and collaboration challenge which I'm going to start calling PIC because that's so much easier to say. If I'd known that this series would have taken off with wings the way it has done, <laughs> I would have chosen a much shorter title to start with. However, as you will have seen from the thumbnail of the title and if you have read it in the description, this time I am collabing once again with the ever beautiful Nona from hashtag my so called life 1977 so if you want to find out exactly which picture has inspired our looks today and exactly what this looks like in glorious technicolor Then my friend, you, you have the best seat in the house. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Hey, uh, welcome back from the intro. If you can hear that slight buzzing, that's Hubby using his bed trimmer. Um, hopefully the intro is in black and white. I really hope the intro is in black and white. Uh, because this is the continuation of my photo inspiration collaboration series which every time I, if this is now I think episode 27 and I keep saying if I'd known it was going to be this popular I would have chosen a shorter name and then Anya pointed out that photo inspiration collaboration uh, initials are pick so this is my pick series <clears throat> got to be easier to say. Uh, and as you will have seen from the intro, this is a continuation with Nona, who I've collabed with on her own and as part of the Bitches of East Week, and now we're doing one on her own again. It was my turn to choose the photo. I sent a load of different photos over for Nona to choose from, and she chose this one, which I have actually got on my phone in front of me because due to the magic of the movies I'm waving it thin air. Now this is actually a photograph that I took back in ooh, 2010, so this is a good nine years old now this photo and it was taken in December, hence the Christmas trees, in Ypres Town Square because at the time I was working for the Royal British Legion in their pilgrimage department known as Remembrance Travel and we were doing a staff bonding uh, Christmas staff works do combined with checking out some different restaurants and different um, places that had opened up that we wanted to check out and decide whether we wanted to include them in any of the tours. So it was a combination of a recce and a Christmas do and we were just heading to the Menning Gate for the uh, the last post that they always do and the town square just looked so beautiful blanketed in snow that I just had to take a photograph now I'm pretty sure a lot of you are going to be shocked because because of the lighting and because of the snow and because of the time of year it's a very brown and yellow themed photo which as you all know, if you're a regular viewer, I tend to go for much brighter, more colourful uh, photos. So this is out of my comfort zone, but it's the perfect chance to use my September rose. God, the magnet on this is good. There we go. My September rose brew palette. Look at that. Now this to me is what a neutral palette should be, because it's not boring. 
but I think in here I'm going to have all the tomes that I need. Now, uh, this is a teaching channel, so uh, my chronic pain means I can't blend as quick as I used to. Uh, and the fact that I like to go step by step so that even complete beginners can follow means that if, oh good lord, sorry, I'm struggling at the moment, I'm getting about, if I'm lucky, three hours sleep a night, and that's not three hours in one chunk, it's, it's broken into like 20 minute segments here and there. Uh, so I do apologise if I end up yawning at you throughout this. I do have any drink on hand to try and keep me going. But yes, so if I'm going a bit too slowly for you, there is a speed widget up there somewhere. Please feel free to use it. I honestly don't mind. Right, faces wash, moisturiser, SPF and primed. Let's get you zoomed in and do the quick talk through on eye shapes. Right, the primer that I'm using is, as always, I haven't used any other primer since I tried this one. This is the Crown Pebble Blank Page Primer, and I've got it in shade Cotton. Now, given that I've used this every single time I've done a makeup look, and I only had a half a pot, look how well it's lasted. Look at that. I have bought a full pot, though. <laughs> you can buy a half pot to see if you like it. The things I like about this one is it's not sticky, so you can blend on it straight away. And even with my deep set eyes, look, no creasing, woohoo! <clears throat> Talking of deep set eyes, now, a lot of people with deep set eyes are mistakenly informed they have hooded lids. I'm going to talk you through, <sighs> I'm going to talk you through the difference between a hooded lid and a deep set eye and I'm going to tell you the tips for how you can follow any tutorial you see and make it work for your eye shape. Now, when I relax my brows and look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner so I don't have a hooded lid. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line part or all of your mobile lid that you have a full or a part hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Your workaround is to get a brush something like this or a pencil brush or a detailing, you know, very fine detailing brush and sketch out on your static lid where you need your crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between crease and brow so just use a slightly smaller blending brush and you'll be absolutely fine. Deep set eyes, oh, sorry these, these visitors are arrived and they're not paying rent and I'm not happy. Hmm. Deep set eyes are different in that we can see our mobile lids, we don't need to create a new crease. Sorry, I'm going to try and cut as many of these yawns out as I can. Hopefully once I get going the talking will increase the oxygen in my bloodstream and stop me from yawning quite as much. Deep set eyes are also referred to as double lidded eyes but we suffer the same problems that people with hooded lids have in that we get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. If we're cutting our crease we have to cut onto the upper lid rather than just on the socket. And even when we use glitter glue, we get a bare patch here. Let me show you why. If I cover my mobile lid this side and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again that folds back away. And if I cover the upper lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got lid space there as well that folds back in and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that gives us the same issues. Our workaround is when we're putting the colour through our crease just every so often sit back, relax your brows and just make sure you can just see it above your crease line. 
enough whippering. I want to put some colour on my face. Uh, I'm going to start off with... Oh, for goodness sake, woman, shut up with the yawning. I'm going to start off with this Morphe Jeffree Star. It's clean, it's just stained. Uh, and this is the JS9. And this is one of his natural hair brushes. And I'm going to start off by going into... Uh, I think I'll go into Ginger to start with. Now, Nona I have collabed with quite a few times. She is such a lovely woman. I have never heard her say a bad word about anybody, literally ever. She always puts the most supportive comments on people's videos. She always makes a point of seeing all of your videos, even if it takes her a little while she does get through them all and ends up watching all of your videos and she is just she's such a sweetheart she really is she's one of the nicest people on this platform um, and I absolutely love collabing with her I count her as one of the very good friends that I've made on YouTube and you can see I'm just Gently blending this in. And I'm only picking up a little bit of powder each time to try and minimise the fallout because with natural hair brushes you do get more fallout than you do with thin synthetic. I do struggle here and here with dry patches that can sometimes make it difficult to get pigment to stick but so far this seems to be doing okay. And like I said, this brew palette is amazing. It's Michelle that runs September Rose didn't think I'd be interested in it. I'm like, oh no, you've got to be kidding. That's that's what that's what a neutral palette should look like. There's some browns, but there's also there's some burgundies, there's some oranges, there's some yellows, there's a a greeny brown, there's a really really deep green that looks black some gorgeous golds and a beautiful beautiful pale white that can be used as a highlight I said it's just this is what a neutral palette should be it's not 50 shades of brown so I do have a discount code with September Rose and Crow and Pebble all my discount codes are listed in my description box they will clearly state if I earn from them or not. September Rose was the first ever discount code that I had on my channel. Um, bless her heart, she uh, she trusted me with a discount code from very early on. Um, but it was it was non-affiliated, and that was fine by me. I wasn't expecting to earn from it. Um, I've got super deep creasing here where this eye was pulled around at the hospital when I was a kid. So I do have to gently stretch the lid out so I don't get creasing in the shadow here. But don't do that unless you absolutely have to or you will end up with creasing like what I have got and you will not like it because it is a bugger. Yeah, so um, I'm sure from September Rose trusted me with a discount code really early on bless her heart and as I said it wasn't affiliated which was fine she was a new company she couldn't be giving out affiliated codes straight away I was just really happy that she'd give me a discount code for everybody to use um, I always sit back and check the shapes because unless you're James Charles and you photoshop your eyes they usually are different shapes they're not symmetrical so you kind of have to sit back and just make sure you're getting similar shapes both sides I just needed to go up a little bit there. There we go, that matches. Um, yeah, and um, she ended up messaging me a little while ago saying, I've had so many orders come through using your code. You've driven so much traffic my way. Um, I don't feel right in you not having an affiliated code now. 
So she actually made my code affiliated, which I thought was really sweet of her. Not that it will change my opinion of any of her products at all. Mainly because I'm such a crap liar, you'd see straight through it. If I tried to lie to you, you would know. Lying, not one of my best skills. How could lying be described as a skill? I suppose it is in some respects, isn't it? If you're an actress or an actor or a lesbian or a spy. I am none of those things. Right, I've just cleaned this off using a microfiber cloth. And I'm going to go in with the, the greeny brown called Almond. And I'm just going to run that through just a little bit lower. Just blend the two together. I'm not too worried about it getting on my, my bow lid. I'm not going to cut the crease but I know that the shimmers that I'm going to use are opaque enough that it will cover anything on my lid but if you are worried you can just get a pad with some micellar water on or a q-tip or a cotton bud and just you know carefully take any pigment off but as I said I'm not worrying about that. Deepen this up the green one. Yeah, so September Rose was actually my first ever discount code. Bless her. And she gave me that long before I was even, I think I'd only got about 300 subscribers at the time. Um, and I love the fact that, you know, she's a, a UK indie brand supporting an up and coming. UK makeup channel, which I thought was really sweet of her. So you can see these colours just blend so nicely together. It's one of the things I love about the September Rose palettes, they do blend really well. Right, this dry patch here is starting to take some of the colour away as I'm blending, possibly because I'm using a natural hair brush this time. If you get that, just once you've blended the edges out, get some extra pigment on the brush and just lightly tap to fill in the areas that you want a little bit more depth of colour. See? Just like that. Not like that. Like that. <laughs> this side's a little bit easier to show you because obviously I can close this side, but if I close the other one, blind in this eye, not a lot of makeup's going to happen over that side. So again, just blending this in. Yeah, if you've not watched Nona before, you really should go over and have a look. She does some amazing looks. Um, she started off with a lot more neutral since she's been collabing with other people she's got much more into using colour um, and she does really well with it as well I mean for someone who was still pretty new to colour some of the the um, collabs that we've done together she's produced some amazing amazing looks So if you've not been able to watch her, you really should. She doesn't just do makeup either. She does. Um, I'm watching she do a thing where she built a um, a brush stand out of stuff that she got from the dollar store, and it looks amazing. It really does. I mean, she could quite. You, you know, if if that was in a shop somewhere, you would buy it. Put it that way. Just buffing the edge really lightly just to blend it into that orange. Okay. As I said, I get a lot more fallout this eye anyway, but I am getting a bit, bit more fallout from this brush. Right, I'm going to go to a slightly more tapered brush now to run a colour through the crease. 
as I started with natural hair, why don't I continue with natural hair? This is his JS6. Uh, I have got this from the original set as well. With the icicle handles. Um, the JS5 and the JS6 in the revised ones with these handles. The bristles are much softer and much more... Um, this is more tapered at the top rather than being blunt, for example, and it's it's a bit thinner as well, so it just, they've modified the shape slightly to make it a bit more uh, user friendly. Right, I'm going to go into uh, Puer, P-U-E-R, which is this gorgeous deep brown. If it wasn't a a tea palette as in brew. I'd say it was chocolate brown but this is a real black tea leaf brown. I'm gonna run that gently through the crease like so. That's why I wanted a flatter brush so that I could keep it more contained and then what I'm gonna do is just very gently buff all the way along that line Obviously if you've moved your crease up, this is where you now follow your new crease line with this colour. And if you're like me with deep set eyes, sit back and just check, you can just see it above the crease there. I'm just going to take it a little bit further up on the edge here. Just kind of scoop there, sort of thing. And again, just gentle blending, circling towards the nose as I come in, and then away from the nose as I come out. And then just gently buffing the tail that I've created here. Like so. Mm, I like that. Now I've got to try and repeat it this side. Deep joy. When I'm putting a deep colour through the crease like this, I tend to do it in short little windscreen wipers to start with to try and minimise some of the fallout across here. You're still going to get it on the outside edge, that's unavoidable unfortunately. But it does at least minimise it across the lid a bit. Now normally doing this sort of circular movement because it stretches the eyelid round, it will sort any um, tiger striping. But with my deep creasing, I do have to just check. Yeah, can you see this, the fine striping that I've got there? So I do have to just gently stretch the lid out. Just to make sure we've got a seamless blend. Yeah, the, um, the first palette that September Rose brought out was Slush, which I think was one of the first rainbow palettes I bought that I really liked. Uh, and then there was a delay with bringing out Slush too. Uh, and Brew came out first, or rather second but it came out before Slush 2 did. But Slush 2 is now available as well. And there is a bundle price available if you want to buy both the slushes together. Just checking I've got the same shape both sides. Yes I appear to have, that's excellent. 
Let's build that colour up there a little bit because that dryness on that collar is. Uh, let's actually let's bring it down to the lid a little bit on this outer edge. I think I'll do that this side as well. Just buff it ever so gently onto the outer third. In the brush. I actually use a microfiber cloth because I find it's much more gentle, especially if you're using natural hair brushes than a colour switch is. Right. Let's just tidy up the edge with that pad with my cellar water on it. This is why I always do my base after I've done my eyes. Because it does give you the option of doing this. <coughs> As you can see. Voila. Now this is one of his... As, he bought two sets... Geoffrey bought two sets of brushes out with Morphe. He started off with the brush set that included the face brushes and then he bought out the eye brush set and then he re-bought out these but with these handles and had some additional brushes that weren't originally included in either one this is one of those brushes this is JS23 which I believe is a concealer brush but I love these packing colour onto the lid. So I am going to go into, I think, cold brew. Now never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will create hard pan, you will make it pretty much impossible to use it properly. Once I've packed the pigment both sides, I'm then going to wet the brush. I'm just using a setting spray, you can use anything, uh, Mario Badesco or MAC Fix Plus, you know, like a moisturising spray, or setting spray, priming spray, finishing spray, um, you can even just use plain water, all we're doing is wetting the pigment. I'm going to look into a little mirror down here so you can see what I'm doing on this eye. I'm just going to apply this to the inner and middle third of the lid. This is the darker of the two shimmers. There is a very, very bright shimmer in here as well. But because the photo is deeper at night, I didn't want a, you know, really super, super bright shimmer. I just wanted something that would look like, you know, the, the lights reflecting off of the snow. And you can see, I think, just how pretty that, that shimmer really is. I'm just going to dry the brush off on the microfiber cloth so I can go back in and re-pigment it up for the other eye. The, um, the two shimmers are very, very soft in here. So be careful, don't, don't push into them too hard because you will create an absolute mess. Because they are very, very soft and very, very creamy almost. They're almost like a they're almost a cream to powder, but they're a powder, if that makes any sense. Right, this side I do have to stretch out to make sure that the pigment does not just fill up in the crease. Because if I don't, what happens is it just packs loosely into the crease rather than being 
properly blended on as I'm doing here. And then as I move my eye through the day, I get cascades of it coming down my face, which is not great. That just same thing again, pack this onto the inner and middle third. further out on this one actually. Let's dry that off on there, pick up a little bit more pigment. Back to the brush. Just can Continue a little bit further along the eye to better match the other side. There we go. Right, I am going to pause you while I go and stick some foundation and whatnot on, and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. So, you're going to see me instantly. I will see you the very next time I press the record button. I am back. Right. I'm going to use this flat top brush that I showed you before. And I'm going to go in with um, the deep deep brown that I use, the Pu'er, or Pu'er, or however you pronounce it. And I'm going to run that along the lower lash line. Just joining it up with the kind of faux wing that we made. Because I've been struggling recently getting eyeliner to stay on. Because my fibro is making my eyes super, super watery. I'm hoping now that it's um, <clears throat> mid-September that all the tree and grass pollen will eventually give up the ghost soon because the hay fever combined with the fibro is really making it very difficult for me in terms of keeping any kind of liner on my eye. So that's why I've been kind of faking it with shadow. Right, now this brush was actually from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, the Swamp Queen palette. I love it because it's flat topped but it's super chunky so it really gets up well under the lashes. And I'm going to go into Pumpkin Spice which is this gorgeous sort of mustardy yellow. <coughs> I'm just going to use that to gently buff out that lower lash line and just soften that line a little bit. Make it a little bit more grungy. Now, when you're doing this, don't take it beyond the corner of your eye. Otherwise, this wing effect that we've done here would just get lost. So when you're doing this, sort of stop here. Don't continue it up the outside. I mean, if you like that look, then crack on, do that. But you will lose the effect of that wing that we've done with the shadow. Okay, dark. I like that, I like that a lot. This is a super cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay, I think, probably a decade ago. And I'm going to go into Milk Tea, which is the pure white matte. I'm going to run that. I know normally I use my highlighter, but because of the snow, I kind of just want to use this matte one up under my brow just to just so I could actually I mean you can use a matte highlight you don't have to use a shimmer this will do exactly the same thing just in a slightly more subtle way 
and you can see even on my paper white skin this white does show up and for reference MAC I'm a um, NW13 and I'm just going to pop a little bit of this just on the inner corner of my eye here I'm just going to continue it just under the tear duct because in my shape I like to do that and just gently buff it in with the colour that we run underneath the eye again if you prefer to do this with your highlighter so it sparkles you can but where I'm recreating that photo I just wanted a little bit of matte white just to kind of make the snow stand out a little bit more obviously in the picture the snow is kind of yellow tinged because of the sodium lighting they use in the town square but I still wanted to represent it yeah, I like that right I'm going to pause you one more time. I am going to stick some highlight on and some mascara and a lippy. I'm going to do something with my hair and I'll be back with the final look. And I'm back. Hair's doing whatever it wants as usual really. Um, I used my Jeffrey Sarcophagus um, highlight on my cheeks etc. My Essence uh, Lash Princess False Lash Effect, the green one, mascara. Lipstick is the Coloured Rain Meishi Rain. This was the one that came out at the same time as their Safari Rain palette. So the packaging matches that. But there we go. There is my final look based upon Ypres Town Square in December. What do we think? think I've recreated the picture okay? If you were going to be doing a representation of that look, that, that particular scene, which palettes would you have used? Let me know in the comments because that always interests me how other people would actually interpret the picture. This is, this is why I started this series because it's, it's always so interesting to me. So far, this is episode 27, so far in the preceding 26 episodes, most of the looks have been diametrically different. One of them was similar, but even that wasn't exact. So the fact that people can look at exactly the same picture, with exactly the same colours, and be inspired by different parts of it, that fascinates me. Because the only rules to the pick challenge is you can only use colours in the picture, but you don't have to use all of them. And that's literally the only rules. So I couldn't add a green, like a pure green or a blue, because there isn't one in there. But the shades of brown, the shades of yellow, etc. I could use any of those, or I could have just chosen one and done a completely monochrome look. But that's the whole point of this. It's, it's the fact that different people can be inspired by different elements of the same picture. And it's to reinforce the fact that if you have a palette and you create a specific look with it, just because when you watch Tati recreate, uh, you know, do a look with the palette, or Jeffrey, or Nady from Pop Lux, or any of those, you know, Paige from Seeking Alexandria, for example, if they choose different colours or a different combination of colours, it doesn't mean that your look is wrong. It just means you were inspired differently by the palette. And that's the whole point of this series, to show you how many different ways there are to interpret one image. So if you want to recreate this look and you've got Insta or Twitter or something, do tag me in it because I'd love, love, love to see what, what you've done, how this has inspired you to do your look. Right, 
if you're one of my 4F babies, please, please, please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube are still unsubscribing people. That's the husband if you're wondering what that noise is. Come here. Is it, am I making noises now? Yes. See? Hello. Haven't got a ghost in the kitchen. I have a husband in the kitchen. Can I put a sheet over my head and go... Woo -woo 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 Save it for the Halloween films. Yeah, yeah, it's more appropriate, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, just a bit. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> you have toothpaste in your beard. Oh, no. I've missed it. <laughs> it's right. I've done it. I've got rid of it for you. Thank you, darling. At least it proves you clean our teeth in the morning, eh? Oh. Love you. Love you what's not Jeffrey you're currently wearing my lipstick. Oh. Ooh. It's a look. It's, it's certainly <laughs> one of those, yes. Right. <laughs> Following that I'll brief interlude, my own <laughs> following that brief interlude with the husband. Uh, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed because YouTube are unsubscribing people still. Every week I'm getting people saying, "Oh my God, I'd miss like four of your videos because YouTube would unsubscribe me." Um, so please double check that. And then once you've liked and commented on this one, and maybe even shared it, it would be awesome. You know what I'm going to say now? I need you to go across to Nona's channel. And I need you to check out the look that she has done because uh, this girl's a wonder with neutrals. She will have blown this look out of the water. I'm telling you, she will. She'll she'll blast it. I'm telling you, she will do the most amazing look. And you'll be cheating yourself if you don't go across and have a look and see exactly what she's done. And as always, let her know that you are part of the 4F family and show her the same love and friendship that you offer me in my comments all the time because, let's face it, the 4F family is one of the nicest families on YouTube. Now, if, however, this is the first time you've seen me, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, the husband doesn't always make an appearance. He's on, on, uh, on leave this week while I'm filming. Uh, he does occasionally pop into films, which is very nice, so it's a case of spot the husband. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it would be awesome if you would like to join the 4F family. It's very easy to do. You hit the subscribe button, you hit the notification bell, and you select all notifications. And then you too can join in the craziness that is 4F Beauty. Right. That's quite enough for one day. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.